So for us to be able to host this, what you know, what, what Youth Partners Net is doing is it hits the target for what we're here for. A youth pastor is supposed to say hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. <laughs> Uh, I, I come to this room very familiar with this setting. Uh, my, I'm born in Boston. <laughs> but Lord bless that, that grew from just one busload to 400 kids. And I got the bug and, and never, it just never left. Indeed, I got a call from this guy named T.D. Jakes to ask him to come down and start a church in Dallas. And I didn't really know him, but I felt it was God. We grew from 65 to 5,000 young people in about three and a half years. And God really blessed us there. We learned so much different culture, different kids, same need, same, same passion, same hunger. Young man like Stephen Cartwright was in my youth group. And he got to preaching in Halloween about 15, 14 when you start preaching. 16. 16 years old. So once we raised up the next guys, I could Amen. just go into, into wave mode. I'm waiting for seven years, speaking 250 engagements a year, all over the world. An office in, I had an office in, in Dallas, an office in Atlanta, an office in Melbourne, Australia. And I was about to open an office in Johannesburg, South Africa, when uh, we got this call to come to Denver. And I really, um, it snows here. <laughs> and I, I have been praying for Hawaii. I got here and, and the people were so nice. I, I've never met people nicer than here at Denver. They're just open and welcoming. And, I mean, you ask for direction, they say, get in, I'll take you. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm giving. It's been a privilege and an honor to serve here. And this last year, we're just learning. We just learned somebody asking, what's your vision for <laughs> impacting youth in Denver? I have no idea. I'm just sitting and listening and learning and gathering information. David, I love David. I'm enamored with David. My first book, which is on youth ministry, is called The Winning Spirit. When we were talking about David, what was so fascinating about David to me is that David, God walked David through different steps and stages of his development. The first stage, of course, is his Bethlehem stage. And every youth worker, every pastor, every leader will go through a Bethlehem stage. This Bethlehem stage is where you deal with your lion and you deal with your bear. You're not ready to take on Goliath until you've killed your lion and your bear. Surviving Bethlehem. It's the hardest thing that you can ever do. Surviving the beginning, when nobody knows your name, when nobody calls your name, when you're not being booked or being looked for. David is just living in obscurity. He's being faithful with just a few sheep that he doesn't own. Until you can be faithful with some sheep that are not yours, you're not eligible to get any more. I need a good amen right about that. Until you can be faithful with the small things, you'll never be ruler of much. And I know what it is to, to be the youth budget. My friend Andy and I, Pastor Andy Thompson, he, he now pastors 7,000 member church in Durham, North Carolina. He was the youth pastor. I was the assistant. And, and that was a great title. It meant nothing because we had no salary. And we're both in school. I know what it is to walk into a Christian bookstore, take the thing down off the shelf, and find out my, my lesson for Friday night, <laughs> fold it back up, put it back on the floor. You have to kill your lion. Your lion is your local devil. I haven't lived here long enough to know what the local devil is here. I don't know what the, really the line that is roaring in the city as we go through prayer and we listen to people. We're learning, but you gotta kill the local devil. Then you gotta deal with the bear. I see the bear as your own personal generational curse. You gotta deal with that thing that messes with people in your family. In my family, it was depression. It was despondency. It was hopelessness. It was divorce. I had to kill that in Boston before God could take me higher. I had to learn how to do it with a rock and a rag. If you can't, you, you may not ever see a sword. You may never get a shield. But if you can master the little things that God has around you, he can take those things and use them to bring down the biggest giant in your life. You got to pass the test of Bethlehem. Now, well, this is for the young, young youth workers. What's interesting here is David gets to the next city, which is Gibeah. He gets to the next city, Gibeah, but he never passes out a business card. Hmm. He doesn't put a video on YouTube. He doesn't call a million people. He makes such a noise in Bethlehem 
that they come looking for him. Where God puts you is who you will always be. Everything you ever want to know about David, we can learn about him in Bethlehem. Mm. It's, it's the amazing thing about Bethlehem. Is if you can do it with nothing, Amen. Then All right. you can do it. If you can rock it with nothing, if you can say, all I got is Jesus mm. and this pebble, All right. we're going to kill anything that comes through that door. Yeah. If you can say, we're going to love every young person that comes in here, we're going to find a way to do it, we're going to work together, we're going to network our resources. That's why I'm stuff like this. That's why I've come in my crazy schedule now. It's because it's so important that if you can do it with nothing, by the time you get to a place where you learn how to use a sword, by the time you learn how to draw up an RFP, by the time you learn <laughs> how to get on the phone and raise a million dollars in 20, million, 20 minutes, by the time you get to that level, you don't even really need it anymore because you know, hey, hey, and if that don't work, we'll still take you down. All right. See, we won't trust you until you served under somebody who you didn't agree with. Mm. Because the, the, mm, mm. the real definition of submission is agreement when you don't agree. Wow. Hey! Amen. <laughs> yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. He is there and he assumes the position of most youth pastors, youth workers. This is the position. <laughs> Humble. Mm. Servant. He doesn't walk in and say, I'm the next king, and this is how you should run this, and I think this is it. And uh, if he had done that, he would have had the duck because Saul would have killed him. Because sometimes God hides you behind one role as he prepares you for another. Ooh. His exposure is how God prepares you for your future. Hmm. And then, of course, we come to Elah. So we go from Jerusalem to Gibeah to Elah. And that's, that's the part you know. That's the part where David kills Goliath. It's the, it is the turning point moment of his life. It's when he goes from obscurity to popularity. It's when, it's what everybody sings about. It's what everybody knows about. That David and Goliath moment when you bring your giant down. It, it's your bio for the rest of your life. If you haven't had it yet, uh, praise God. It, but for most of us, you, you may have, if you're around my age or a little older, you've had that, that, that defining moment in your existence where for the rest of your life, if they have to describe me, they will speak of that Goliath moment, that breakout, breakthrough moment in your life. But when God promotes you from obscurity to popularity, be prepared for two things. Number one, be prepared for great doors opening, but also be, be prepared for great attack to come. Same church that is saying, Hosanna! Yeah. Yeah. We'll say crucify. Right. Yeah. And just a few days later, popularity can be a problem. Mm -hmm. cave. He goes from living in a palace to living in oh. a cave. He goes from being in to being out. <laughs> from being up to being down. And God calls this promotion. Mm -hmm. He puts him in an ugly, dirty, dingy cave. And guess who he sends to it? The best people? Mm -mm. No. The broke, the busted, and the disgusted. Mm. He sends the, those who are in debt, who are in distress. He sends the work. If you're, if you're going to be messed up, amen, at least send me somebody good. I don't know if you've ever looked at your ministry staff and said, my God, what do we have here? <laughs> God use this because if he can do anything with this ragtag band of people, yeah. it proves that he's the God all by himself. If he can turn, oh, yeah. if he can turn anything good out of this messed up group of cave dwellers, living in a cave. Have you ever looked at your office and said, <laughs> look like a cave? <laughs> he sits in there. Are the broke, the busted, the disgusted, those in distress, those in debt, those who are despondent, those who are depressed. Because he wants you mm. to do something with them. In fact, and when you're in the cave, you just glad for company. <laughs> Amen. All right. David is in a place where he's open, he's ready to disciple what comes through the door. And here's the thing, and I'll end here. 
as he turns this group, this ragtag band bunch of nobodies with nothing, in debt, in distress, no money, no status, no clout, he turns them into his mighty men who never lose another battle, who stand in power, who jump into a pit with a lion hmm. on a snowy day. He turns them into something because God, whoever God sends through the door, they may look messed up, but there's really a mighty man or a mighty woman on the inside mm. of yes. Yes. Mm. And the reason he sent them to you is because there is something in you yes. that can pull out the mightiness mm. in them. My God. A dual discipleship is when you, you, you just begin to work with what you have. Mm. Help me preach, tell your neighbor, use what you got. Use what you got. Use what you got. Until you're willing to use what you got, you'll never get anything else. Because when you can turn mighty people out of your cave and they become the mighty men that lead a whole nation, then you begin to see that God can do anything but fail. Amen. Mm. My conclusion, it's been my privilege, it's my honor. I've been here for one solid year in Denver. I'm still learning. But what's been so great is I've been able to call on mighty men and mighty women of God. My king discipleship. A mm. dual discipleship. Mm. Let's pray. Mm. Awesome God, thank you.